Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shane making another Chemistry 105 laboratory pre-lab video. And actually this lab is going to have a little bit of post-lab calculations in it as well. Uh, so a couple things before we get started here. So on the left side of the uh, chalkboard up there, make sure, well, I, guess, I, mean, I guess it is left side. Uh, make sure you watch this video. Take and upload your quiz, arrive at your designated time. Remember we're cutting the periods in half. And when you come into the lab, start working right away. Uh, and I should have put up there, I don't think I put this up there. Print out the uh, activity called density determinations. Make sure you print that out. And it looks like a lot of stuff. We're actually collecting data on, I think, one, two, three, four, five different substances. So it's a fair amount of work to do in a short period of time. But if you're organized, you can get things done quickly and just collect the data. Don't do the calculations as you go. So once you have the data for a particular part, aluminum cylinder, zinc pellets, and so forth, move on to the next one. Get the data and do all the calculations on your own, applying the rules for sig figs and all that good stuff. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. Um, just make sure you have it printed out. Bring all your eye protection. Be properly attired. Uh, long pants, the whole bit. Uh, things we went over before. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. And I'm not wearing a mask because I'm the only one in the room. So, uh, I don't think I put this up here. Make sure you print the lab. And the lab is density determinations. And it is, uh, well, I guess technically three pages. And there is a piece of graph paper on one of these. We're going to make a graph. You can do that on Excel if you prefer to do that. So we're going to need to be really organized to get this done in a short period of time. So let's go ahead and get started. And on the procedure, I'm just going to go through each one briefly. OK. You can read the procedure. And I'm just going to go through aluminum cylinder zinc pellets. Uh, distilled water is in the big plastic jugs that are around the room. So I'm actually not going to show that one, but those are, those are there. Ethanol will be in a little dropper container. A synonym for ethanol is ethyl alcohol. And then sodium chloride, NaCl solutions, will be in these large containers. And they're labeled. So we have five things water would be here, distilled water, also known as deionized water. It's two different ways of purifying it. And I just want to go through these briefly. Um, the procedure itself, I think, is pretty straightforward, but let's just do one completely. So, oh yeah. So the lab is density determinations. Uh, density is the mass of an object divided by the volume of that object or substance solid, liquid, or gas. We're dealing with solids and liquids today. Gases are kind of a pain. Uh, let's, let's do some abbreviation. So D equals M over V. And the units for mass for this lab, and almost every lab we will ever do, are going to be grams. Symbolized by G. Our electronic balances are grams. Oh, I should point out. The procedure tells you how many sig figs to have on a given measurement. That's fine to have that there, but make sure you use the instrument. So if our electronic balance, we have some new ones, if our electronic balance only gives you five significant digits, only write those down. Don't let that confuse you. Use the instrument to determine the number of significant digits. Not what's on the handout. The handout should be fine in some cases, but we have some new electronic balances and that may not be consistent. I think we can handle that. That's no problem. Okay, let's go through, oh, sorry. Left off, I'm losing my train of thought already. So density is mass over volume, so it'll be grams, and we'll use an electronic balance in every case to measure masses. And volume is gonna be one of two. Most likely it's going to be milliliters, like you use a graduated cylinder to record a volume. Or, if it's a solid object, and we're going to actually use a ruler for this one, cubic centimeters. You 
may have learned this already, I may have said it before in another video. A milliliter is the same thing as a cubic centimeter. So we could actually calculate the volume of an aluminum cylinder by applying the geometric formula, which we're going to do, and get the measurements of the cubic centimeter. I'm going to show that one a little more explicitly. The other ones, I think you can handle on your own. Okay, so we're going to be measuring some masses and volumes and calculating some densities and doing a couple of other things. So this lab, this video may be a little long, but that's okay. You can fast forward or stop and do whatever you want. So it's pre and a post lab video. All right, let's go through the first one. Yeah, I'm not gonna read this procedure to you. So it says, determine the mass of an empty dry filled with 50 milliliter beaker. I think that's the first step in almost every one of these. So you record the mass of a beaker empty and dry. Fine, record its mass. Put the, the uh, aluminum cylinder in with the beaker and record the mass of the two things combined. And then subtract those two to get the mass of the aluminum cylinder. We're doing that for a reason. Uh, some of the other ones we're gonna, are gonna be liquids, so we'll, we're not gonna just put the beaker in there and hit the tear, the re-zero button. So don't worry about that. So you subtract those two masses and get the mass. Okay, this is where I'm gonna show you a sample calculation. So I think we're good over here. Yeah, I think there's space. I am just gonna make up some numbers. I'm not gonna make up the ruler measurements. I'm gonna make up the mass. So a sample calculation. Let's assume that the mass of the aluminum, this is a different symbol than in, in your lab manual, that I measured out was 9.321 grams. I have no idea if that's what this is. Probably not. And I think some of our electronic balances only go to three decimal places. So this will have four significant numbers. You may be able to get five. You may be able to get six if the mass is more than 10. So just use the instrument. Um, okay, well, how are we getting the volume? And I want to show you this calculation. It says, using the ruler, determine the height of the cylinder in centimeters. All right, I'm just gonna do that real quick and kind of just make it a rough estimate. So I'm gonna call this 5.1. So the height of the aluminum cylinder is 5.1 centimeters. I can get a decimal place on this. Make sure you're using centimeters. The next step says uh, determine the diameter, it's a little hard to get on this, so it's going to be a little tricky. And I'm going to call this diameter 1.2 centimeters. Now, it's unfortunate that we're using the same symbol for density and diameter, but I, th I, think, I think we're okay. So. And what else are we supposed to do? Oh, it gives us the formula, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so now we're supposed to use these data and calculate the volume of the aluminum. And the formula is given to you there. If you don't remember this from uh, geometry class, we're going to assume that this is a perfect cylinder. And the formula given to you in the manual is pi, so 3.1415, et cetera, et cetera, times the radius squared times the height. Well, the height we have, we don't have the radius. The radius is half the diameter, so the radius of the aluminum, let's see, what's 1.1 divided by 2? Well, if you're not sure, or so 1.1 divided by 2. And that we, we can take two same things there. I should have been able to do that in my head. It's 0.55 centimeters. So the volume of this aluminum cylinder is going to be uh, pi, which you can call up on your calculator, times the radius, 0.55 centimeters squared.
times the height. That's 5.1 centimeters. Okay, now make sure you understand how to do the math. Right? This is really a post lab part here. Hopefully you can read this. So I'm going to take uh, pi. Where's pi on this thing? I don't know. There it is. So second pi times 0.55 squared times 5.1. And we're going to get two sig figs in our answer. Okay, I came up with uh, rounding 4.8. The units are going to be square centimeters and regular centimeters to the first time. Okay, it will be cubic centimeters. And I'm going to double check that. So double check that math. So do that on your own real quick. So you can stop the video if you want to. So I'm going to do it in a different order. 0.55. Because this is not my calculator. 0.55 squared times 5.1 times 3.1415. Yeah, so the volume of the aluminum cylinder is 4.8 cubic centimeters. And uh, I think I can erase some of this now. It doesn't matter for the video. So then uh, the density of the aluminum cylinder would be its mass, 9.321 grams, divided by its volume, 4.8 cubic centimeters. Is that right? Yep, mass divided by volume. Our answer is going to have how many significant figures? Divide two numbers to report the answer with the least sig figs. So 9.321 divided by 4.8, 1.9. And the units are going to be grams per cubic centimeter. Now, this is a ridiculous calculation because on page, where is it? On page three, you're given the actual density of aluminum. The actual density of aluminum is 2.702. Now it's listed grams per milliliter here. Remember, that's the same thing as a cubic centimeter. We could list this as 1.9 grams per milliliter. And that does not match up really at all with the accepted value. So the data that I made up doesn't make any sense. I just wanted to show you the calculation. Um, okay, I am, I'm not going to go through each one of these. I, I don't need to. Density is mass over volume. It's always the same thing. So just kind of showing you the calculation. So the zinc pellets, I don't know if you can see this. You can't get the volume of those pellets by using a ruler. That doesn't make any sense. So you'll go get the mass of these. You'll weigh an empty beaker, fine. Pour the pellets into the beaker, fine. Get the, you get the mass there, you subtract the two. Now what you're doing, uh, well, I guess I can show you this. It's not that hard. So you're going to use a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. You're going to put some water in here. I'm not reading the procedure exactly. And you'll write that volume down. Fine. You'll put the pellets in there and the volume will go up. You subtract the two. That gives you the volume of the zinc pellets. Pay attention to significant digits. When you record the volume on here, you should at least get one decimal place. When you subtract the two volumes with the pellets in the water, minus the volume without the pellets, that might change the significant digits because it's based on decimal places. So that's what you do for that one to get the volume. You don't have to do any of this math. And then you calculate the density, the mass, divided by the volume after you do the subtraction. And that's it. And I think that's, for zinc pellets, it's pretty easy. No problem. So we've got that. That you should be able to do on your own. No problem. The distilled deionized water, it's even easier. You just measure them. It's a liquid. It's not even a solid. Just measure some volume here and write that down. That's the volume. Write it down. 
what is it asking you to do? Approximately eight milliliters, but you record, don't record eight, record eight point something, something. It looks like you're looking for two decimal places there. So that's the volume. Pour it into the beaker, get the mass of the beaker in the water. Okay, that, 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 that's easy. That should be easy by comparison. Ethanol is also a liquid. So it's the same thing. Just pour some in here, get the volume, pour it into your beaker, subtract the two masses, and you're, you're good to go. I don't think there's anything much more to it than that. Um, okay. I don't think there's much more going on. When I, when I jump to, I'm skipping the NACL for a moment. I'm jumping ahead to calculations. So you're going to show the density calculations for all of those, for those four substances. For, so letter A is the aluminum cylinder. We kind of did an example there. Show all your work. The density of zinc pellets is B. The density of the distilled water, which I don't have here, is C. The density of ethanol is D. The salt, we're doing something a little different with. So that's the first page of the lab. Oh, the second page of the lab. Oh, I guess I can show you this, why not? So you have four densities, and then you're given theoretical densities from above, and you're asked to calculate a percent error. Why don't I just show you that? This video is getting a little long, but I'll show you that one. And we don't need any of this. Percent error. Percent error is a quantitative calculation that tells you how close is your value to an accepted or a handbook or a theoretical value? So those are all handbook, accepted, theoretical. Those are synonyms for one another. How close are you? The general formula for percent error, there's different ways of writing this. I want to be consistent with what's written here. And this, I'm going to write it a little bit differently. So you're going to take your calculated value, sometimes called your experimental value, so your value that you did with your own hands, minus the theoretical value, just using some abbreviations. Sometimes this is going to be positive, sometimes it's going to be negative when you do this math. So we put absolute value symbols, so that numerator is always positive. Then you divide by the theoretical value, and then you multiply, sorry, this is getting messy. Then you multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. Let's do an example for the percent error for aluminum. Uh, the calculated value is, let's, let's use the same units here, so I'm going to use this one, it is 1.9 grams per milliliter. The theoretical value is 2.702 grams per milliliter. We take the absolute value, which makes sense here, because that's going to be a negative number. 1.9 minus 2 points, that's going to be negative. Divided by 2.702 grams per mil, and then times 100. So go ahead and do that math. I'm not overly concerned about significant figures here, but let's not be sloppy. We're going to subtract these two numbers and get an answer, then divide two numbers and get an answer. So stop the video if you want to and do this calculation. And what do you get? And I'm going to do it too. And I'll do it in steps. 1.9 minus 2.702 is negative 0.802. And I can only write one decimal place. One decimal place, three decimal places. So I'm going to have to write here after the absolute value. I got 0 0.8 grams per milliliter. So the absolute value, and then divided by 2.702 grams per milliliter times 100 to make it a percentage. So I'm going to clear.
figure that 0.8 divided by 2.702, enter, times 100. And I guess we're only going to have one same thing, right? Okay, ah, uh, one same thing. My calculator gave me 29.60, a bunch of numbers. If I want to make that one same thing, I'm going to have to call this 30. Error, which is terrible. 30% error is not very good. I'll double check this math. If I did it wrong, just correct it. So you take your value minus the, the theoretical value, absolute value, divide by this times 100. So for this example that I just made up, it's 30% error, which is terrible. So you're going to calculate a percent error for each of those four things that we showed you here. The salts, we're doing something slightly different. With. I think that takes us through here. Um, we're going to get, I'm not going to go through all this, but we're going to get densities of all of these salts, their solutions. So we get, we do the same thing. We measure a volume, we measure a mass, we calculate a density. But the, the key here is they have different amounts of salt in them. I don't think it's probably too much of a stretch. What is this? This is 5% salt. This is 15% salt, sodium chloride. This is 25% salt. How do you think the density of these solutions is going to change? Low, low percentage to high percentage, just think about it. Well, I think as we put more salt in, the density is going to increase. Uh, the density of seawater, for example, is a lot greater than the density of fresh water. So we're kind of getting on that idea here. So you calculate the density of those three things. That's really not a problem. And we may have to share some class data to get all the data done. I think we're going to do that and then take an average. I don't think I'm going to bother going through that. So everybody in the lab is going to get a set of data. And then we're going to put the data on, a, on the board. So you have a bunch of 5% data and a bunch of 15% data. And for social distancing, I'll probably um, write the data for you. And then you'll calculate an average density. You're asked to show all of that. Nice. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of that, but you're going to do one more thing with the data because we want to show you how to make graphs properly. So when you make this graph, you can use graph paper, but I think some of you are probably more sophisticated and can use Excel. So when you make a graph, so this is how you're going to do this. It's a couple things. Every graph should have a title. Uh, give it some title that makes sense. That's maybe that's too big of a title. Give it a title that makes sense. Uh, make sure that your axes are properly labeled. And what are we doing here? We're putting um, you're putting the percent sodium chloride on the x-axis, and I think you're just using 5, 15, and 25. So 5%, 15%, 25%. And you're putting the density of the salt solution that you calculate over here. So I, don't, I don't know what those densities are, so you'll have, you'll have densities. Now ideally this should be a pretty straight line. So 5% should have maybe a density there, density there, density there, something like that. Don't worry about it if it's not perfectly straight. I think that's what you're doing. Okay, a couple things about graphs. Make sure you take up the whole space. Don't don't make the graph in some little form. Take up the whole space you're given. If you use Excel, uh, please make sure you take up the whole space. Graphs do not have to start at zero, zero. They don't have to start there. So scale the graphs and take up a bunch of space. And then you're drawing a best fit line through those. If you know how to use Excel, it will draw the line of best fit for you. If you don't, you can actually take, and it works pretty well, if you have it on paper, you can just take a ruler and kind of fit it here. If I had a meter stick, it might be easier. You kind of fit it. And draw a straight line 
as best you can to get as close to the data points as you can. What you don't want to do is just connect the dots. Make sure you draw a straight line, not a zigzag line, and connect the dots. And then I think you answer some questions after that. That's good. Okay, it's a good lab, good way to introduce some topics. So uh, that should be good. Sorry for the long video, but this is both a pre-lab and a post-lab video. So good luck with it. Be prepared as soon as you come into lab to get to work, to start to get the mass of your aluminum, your pellets, get your volumes, and get going. All right, nice work. We'll see you in lab.